Good morning, the Gambia. We are back. Teach, coach, mentor. My name is George Ohan, producer here in California. And this is video number three of five in our series. And the reason we're doing this series is because Mr. ML So uh, over there in the Gambia during the African Film Festival, which was streaming on rootflix.com, got together the country, got together the filmmakers, the actors, and together collectively, out of all of the countries in the continent, the Gambia came through with the most shares and the most likes and the most amount of momentum when it came to promoting the African Film Festival and Rootflix 2020. And in exchange uh, to show my gratitude for, for what they've achieved, such a huge achievement, uh, what I wanna do for you is to give this little short series of classes and Trust me, I'm, I'm over here on WhatsApp and you guys are hitting me with some, some tough questions, some really good points. Uh, I love to respond to it. I'm doing it happily with a big smile. I'm like, wow, that's a good question. So uh, it's, been, it's been a great uh, interaction so far. I have some notes for the day. We keep these videos pretty short, about 10 to 15 minutes, give you some, some information. You guys take some notes over there and we're developing filmmakers, we're developing actors, we are developing the independent film industry and the film industry with the tourism council uh, as a whole uh, to get more people to know about this place. So uh, it is my pleasure to do this and let's get started. First thing I wanna talk about today is goal setting. What are your goals? Do you have a mind that sets goals? So that's something, you know, do you have a goal mind? Basically, that's what, that's what we're after here. And if, if you think about who did you speak to for the past 10 days, just go back through and make a list. Make a list of the people. Who did I speak to? Who did I have an actual conversation with for 10 days? Who can I, or start today, start just making a list of it. And then 10 days later, you'll see who did you speak to? You look at that list, and then you compare that list with your goals list. Do they match up? Do things add up? Hmm, I'm talking to these people, but my goal is over here. Does it add up? If it doesn't add up, that's, that's the first hint that you should maybe start changing who you're talking to. The more you talk to the people who are closer associated to where you want to be, where your goals are for your future that you want for you, you're going to end up there much quicker. That path is going to be much quicker. But if you're over here talking to this guy and her and she and him and all these other people that are not really in alignment with where you want to be with your goals, that is taking time away from you reaching your actual destination that you want to get to. So that's, that's really important. You should think about that. Now, if you want to set goals, uh, I, I made a few little examples here. Like, let's say one goal is to build a business. Okay, well, what is building a business? You should have some more notes and things about that. That's one goal. The next thing is um, refine a budget. What's a budget? Why do I need a budget? What is that? Well, if you want to earn a certain amount of money, you should know what that amount of money is. Once you know what that is, then you could start to create a budget and, 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 and a plan to see how will you get there. There is a way. There are solutions. If you have a specific number of income, a certain number of money, dollars that you would like to earn per month or per year, you can do it. You can actually reach it. If you're watching this video, that means you have the access to earn that money. And, and that's through the internet, that's through digital marketing, that's through a lot of different ways. We have to be more resourceful. We have to see what is available to you. How can we use those little bit of resources to benefit you? That's where we have to be smart. We have to be resourceful. It's not a lack of resources these days. It's a lack of resourcefulness. We need to be more resourceful. We have to use what is at our fingertips better. Okay? Next thing is, who, um, your social media, your online presence. If I look at your Facebook, if I look at your Instagram, if I look at something, your social media presence, and if that were your clothing, would you have on a nice suit? Would you look nice based on how does your social media presence look? 
do you have all kinds of things posted about a lottery and a game and Pokemon and this and that and all these things, religion, uh, politics, all this other stuff? If you do, it's, I would suggest to create a Facebook like page or something separate where you keep only business, only professional, only industry, only film, only acting, only arts, creativity, things like that. Because those people, they don't want to know about all of your personal life. And sometimes when they see something in your personal life, they might say, hmm, I don't want to work with this person based on my judgment of that thing. So if you have your professional page and you're only talking about film projects and different actors and filmmakers, that's much more in alignment with what they want to connect with you about anyways. So you want to keep your personal life separate. You want to keep your film life, your business professional life separate. Okay, moving on. Locations. If you guys are trying to get a location for a place, let's say I want to get uh, the Los Angeles Film School as a location uh, where I'm shooting something. I'm going to tell them, hey, we're going to shoot a scene and inside of this scene, there's going to be a guy in an office and he's going to use your coffee mug and it's going to say Los Angeles Film School. Mm. And he's going to smile and hold the mug. That's called product placement. I'm leveraging as a producer, as a filmmaker, I'm leveraging the fact that I can put product placements, their company, their business's product into my production. What am I leveraging? If I use your product in my production, may I use your location for my production? It's a barter economy. It's called bartering, trading. I'm sure you're familiar. I'm familiar. We do it all the time. It's a normal thing. You have to barter. You have to be creative. You have to be fair. And you have to come up with some sort of written proposal that you type out and you email to them professionally. There's protocol to being professional. Do not send a script to somebody and say, hey, read my script. Unless that person has signed a non-disclosure agreement. Has somebody signed an NDA? non-disclosure agreement. If not, they can read your script and say, hmm, that's pretty cool. And just change a few things about it. Make your male character a female character, make this person that. And now they say, no, that's not your script. I have my own script over here, but, that, but that's my idea. No, it, unless they sign that non-disclosure agreement which says you're not gonna come up with a similar idea, they can do that and it's completely legal. And if you're mad, so it's just an emotional thing, but legally, legally by the law, they have the right to go do that if they want. Is it, I don't know, is it cool? No, I don't think it's cool. But intellectual property gets stolen all of the time. Uh, the country of China does it very well. They do it all the time. They break into people's computers. They steal their business intelligence. They steal their intellectual property. They recreate those ideas for themselves. And uh, worldwide, I think over $500 billion per year is lost to theft of intellectual property from China. So we're not going that far. We're just saying, hey, if you're going to send your story to somebody, you should say, are you willing to sign a non-disclosure non agreement first? If they say no, then hey, you keep your script to yourself. There's no reason to send it to that person. Makes things a little bit more easy. Okay. Locations, barter for them. Say, we're going to show your sign and you're gonna let us use the location. There's no fees involved, there's no payments, there's no nothing. Now, when you go in there, you have to be completely respectful. This is their business, this is their livelihood, they already have their customers, their customers and their employees and them, the owners of the business, do not, do not want to be in your production. Think about it, it's your production, it's my production, why does this guy wanna be in it? Oh yeah, he doesn't. Being in a production is a lot of work. It's a lot of focus. It takes a lot of time. Cut, back to one, rehearsals, this and that. No, do it again, move the light. If you're not a paid actor, or even if you're a non-paid actor, but you're there as part of the project, you're just an extra uh, somewhere in the restaurant. You don't wanna do that, that's, that's work. It's work, this is the film industry, it's an industry. So even if we're there on a non-paid gig, 
you for your industry are gaining a lot of experience. You're gaining a lot of knowledge. You're, you're on set. You're learning. So, so there's value in that for you. But for the guy who's just trying to buy his coffee in the back over there, he doesn't care about your stupid film, your dumb commercial. Same over here in California. If, if I'm filming something and I'm so excited about filming my thing, the guy in the back who's buying his coffee does not care. And as a matter of fact, he's like, hey, don't point that camera at me. So you don't want an extra bus in the back of your scene. You don't want an extra person in the back of your scene. In filmmaking, we want the most controlled environment all the time. We want to control the environment because we can't have an extra random person walking by. We want our person to walk by on cue because that is the blocking of the director. The director wanted that guy to walk by on a certain purpose to move the camera. We're using the blocking for, for a certain reason. So we don't want random people messing up our blocking unless they're just extras way, way in the back and it's fine. But for, mo for the most part, we wanna control the scene, okay? Proposals. Don't go in here and try to ask for something if you do not have a proposal written. If you don't already have a one page proposal for what you're asking for, just don't ask. You're, you're, you will embarrass yourself. You will professionally embarrass yourself. So I'm trying to get you to the next, next, next level very quickly. If you want something, you need to type it out. You need to have it ready. Who, what, when, where, why, how, explain everything explain it all who what when where why how now always be a person of solutions even if somebody tells you no i don't think i want that just be like okay uh i understand i understand do you know somebody else do you know somebody else who might have a business with a similar location who might be able to help us uh maybe even if somebody tells you no, try to turn it into a positive. Try to get something else that can possibly help your production. As an independent producer, as an independent actor or filmmaker, we're always working with next to nothing. We always have nothing. One very valuable piece of information that one of my professors let me know, uh, Lance Young, he said, George, if you do not have enough money for a project, you are not being creative enough. That's deep. That's real deep. If you do not have enough money for your project, you are not being creative enough. So how far does your creativity go? How creative are you? How creative am I? Where, where, where the money is, is not the issue, I still have to come up with a solution. I still have to be a man of solutions. That's what you should do. You should always still not let the money or the finance be the roadblock. Okay. Product placement, we talked about this hat right here, Cali Bread. Cali Bread, look it up on Facebook, small Facebook page. They sell clothing, they sell apparel. Uh, not a huge company, but this is how product placement's done. You say, hey, bro, I noticed you're doing your little side hustle over here. Can, uh, can we put your hat in our movie if you pay us $20? If you pay us $50? Well, why am I going to pay you $50 to use my hat? Well, with your hat in our movie, people will be able to see it however many times, and maybe you can make 10 sales. If you sell 10 hats, you're going to make your money plus some. It's a marketing venture. That's why the proposal is so important, because you write the proposal as a marketing venture for product placement. And if you say, well, they don't have that in my country. They don't have that in my area. Ding, 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 ding. Oh my Lord, wow. Thank you, Allah, thank you, wow. The, you've been blessed with the biggest blessing. You've been blessed, they don't have it in your country. You are the first person to identify that new market. Wow, take advantage of it. Then start writing a thousand proposals and get them out to every company. Hurry up, hurry up, get them out there. If you tell me they don't have that in your area, that's crazy, then, then, then you must be the first. But if they do have that in your area, you have to connect with those people who are doing product placement, who are doing advertising on a major level. Who's the biggest advertisers? Who's doing all of the digital advertising in your country? Somebody is doing it. There's a company who owns that space. 
you need to know everything about them. You need to see how are they doing it because now you're doing that on an independent level. You're doing that for the small mom and pop shop. You're doing that for the corner store. You're doing that for that little restaurant over there. You're doing that to help your community. That's what digital marketing does. It, it helps your own community. It helps the small little business in your area. And we could create those things with just a cell phone very easily. Very easily we could create this content and you could be earning money for it. So become more creative in how you ask for money. If you have a proposal, that shows me that you are serious and you are asking for money. You're asking for a professional exchange. If you come up to somebody nonchalant, you're like, hey, I'm making a movie, it's cool. Uh, if you give me some money, maybe we could do your product and give you some uh, percentages or royalties in the end. It's like, what? What are you talking about? It's too confusing. So get to the point, be smart, be specific, be exact about exactly what you want, why do you want it, what does it cost, everything. Who, what, when, where, why, how, okay? Now, to create content is very easy. You take a photograph, if you write a nice poem under it, you post it, that's content. If you take a photograph of something uh, over there, we don't have those photographs here in Hollywood or in California. So think about this. If Hollywood wants to create a scene of somewhere in Gambia with, with actors, 20 actors, a village, it will cost them $20,000, 30000 50000 It will cost them thousands and thousands of dollars to create that scene. You already have that there. So you must do a better job of marketing to making those connections to Hollywood filmmakers worldwide. You see that map behind me? Worldwide filmmakers. Who needs a scene that looks like this from your country? What type of scenes can you recreate with your actors and your filmmakers and just send me the content? Marketing is where it's at. You guys have to start marketing your services. You have to start using what you do have. You have to look at your eyes from a new lens, your, your area. It's like, wow, we have a lot. Everything you have, I don't have it. The way you dress, the way the village looks, the way the cities look, the types of things people are driving, where you're working, we don't have that. All of that footage, all of that content, if you write about it, if you tell me stories about Gambia every day, if everybody's creating a new blog every day, we can have 50 blogs about your country every day if 50 people are doing it. That will be the most marketing probably out of any country in the whole continent of Africa, and you will boost the tourism just because people will find your country more because you have more content than anybody else this is where you earn money the digital marketing you find a customer for doing a small job that small job turns into more income and this is how you start to create your own independently produced projects there's a lot to learn i'm here for you teach coach mentor george ohan producer here in california gambia my people i love you Let's build and let's continue this. This is video number three of number five. Let's go.